everybody it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kids. In today's video I wanted to share the products that I purchased with your very very kind um, Kofi donations. So um, before I get started showing you them if you don't know what Kofi is it's basically a website that helps creators such as people on YouTube um, you know earn a bit of money so that they can put it back into their channels um, show new products and the idea is is that um, you would buy me a coffee, uh, which is roughly three pounds, and then um, that goes back into the channel. I then put up polls to suggest things that um, you might want to see, and then I buy what's kind of most popular. So originally, I had got um, <clears throat> sorry, I bought Forest Girl Coloring Book, but it's lost in the post. I did get a refund. And it was just taking ages to come. So I have decided to obviously repurchase stuff. And as you can see, this is what I got instead. So Peter Pan was one that I had um, got alongside the Forest Club book. So the other things are the like, new things. So also before I start, I just want to say that this filming is a bit different. So as you can see, this is kind of overhead filming compared to filming that I usually do, which is um, a bit different to this. It's not quite... Um, overhead it's um, not quite at that angle so this is actually a not really a tripod thing it's kind of like a monopod clip thing from Tiger which is a shop in, um, that we have and yeah so I have I'm actually filming with my phone so please let me know what format you prefer because if this works then I can do this instead um, for the majority of my videos. The only thing is that I don't know how to um, do the autofocus and how to stop that but I'm, I'm hoping that's not going to be a very big issue but also um, this might shake around a bit so I do apologise in advance if the filming isn't the best for this video because this is the first time that I'm trying to film with it and seeing how it works. So I'm just going to get started. So because these are all things that you guys have purchased, basically, um, you know, it's with your money. Um, that's so, so generous. I can't stress enough how grateful I am that you wish to support me in this way. Um, then, you know, I kind of want you to decide what we do with them on the channel. So I have already said in another video I think that because of school this year it's going to be very hard for me to do colour alongs purely because I have to film all of the colouring then film a voiceover and then upload it but um, aside from that I'm obviously colouring at a slower pace now that I um, you know doing GCSEs it's um, year 11 for me in the UK so yeah it's just not um, not going to be very easy to be able to do colour alongs so that's the one thing that I probably won't be able to do but by all means if you want a colour and chat or a tutorial in a particular book uh, something like that let me know and I can do that for you I'm not going to do a full flip through of Romantic Country because by now unless you're a beginner colourist most people will have seen this book so I'm just going to show you some pictures that I picked out that I really really liked and you can kind of see the cam's already shaking a tiny bit I really do apologise so I don't know which one I'm going to start colouring in, in here and the reason I was holding off doing this video for a bit is because I have actually started doing pages in the other two books to kind of show you some techniques that I was doing but I haven't done anything in this book yet because I've got so many whips I need to finish them before I start any more pages so I doubt I'll finish a page before the end of September I may start one I'm not sure I really liked this one because it was quite simple um, and I really just liked the fact that it, you could focus on one thing at a time it would be a fairly limited palette I think and yeah I really really do like um, this one so that's a potential one that I had picked out so if you haven't seen um, Eri's books they are all drawn out with toothpicks and which I think is just absolutely amazing and this is actually my second copy of the first tale I really really do want to get a second copy of the third tale at some point but because that one was out of print and now it's um, reprinted in Japanese it's only available on Etsy at the moment and with it being on Etsy it's very very expensive for me to buy so I haven't got a, th a second copy of that yet however I do want to at some point but I got a copy of the second tale a second copy of it last year I think and I absolutely love that book I'm so happy I now have a second copy of this and 
the lines in this are darker than those of the, the Tracing Around the World books. So those books have really light grey lines, I believe. I don't have those books. Again, there's some that I would love to get in the future. Um, but these ones are kind of a darker grey. So obviously I can't compare them for you because I don't have the, the Tracing books. But um, these are definitely darker. But they're no, by no means black. So it kind of gives a really nice effect because they're not the lines aren't really, really bold. So... Another page that I had picked out was this one, which is a Halloween one. I originally did this in my um, first copy and I used Prismacolors for it. And I may get around to it for Halloween because I would love the chance to colour it again. Because, yeah, I just absolutely love it. And I love the paper in these books as well because it's quite smooth. It's got a really, really nice um, cream colour to it. It's gorgeous. I then had this Christmas one picked out for Christmas. Uh, obviously it's not Christmas in July or anything like that, it's very much closer to Christmas now being uh, almost the end of September. It's going so, so quickly, so I would love to colour that one at some point. If not this year, then, you know, some other time. And the other one I have is this Christmassy one as well. So I didn't do this page to begin with in my first copy. So with my first copy, it was one of the first books I kind of got. I got the Joanna Basford, then... You know, Millie Morata at the same time, and then the main kind of books I got were, uh, I think it was the su um, summer of 2017. I want to say in the Easter time, I got Romantic Country, the second tale, and then I got this one soon after. And then I got Minuet de Bonheur, and that was by Kaneko Agusa, and then Magical Delights by Clara Makova. So they were kind of, these, you know, and plus those were kind of new artist that I discovered so yeah I didn't end up colouring many pages in this because um I was kind of just testing stuff out and I wasn't really happy with how some of them had um turned out but I'm just going to kind of do a quick flip so you can see a few of the pages um it all comes in chapters so there's different sections which I think is really lovely because it kind of seems more like a storybook and um and so out of the three books this is her least detailed but that's by no means a bad thing I think it's really lovely to have um, difference in all of the books. I, I'd say the third tale is definitely the most detailed um, but this one is um, definitely not as detailed um, you know probably because she was just experimenting seeing what people liked and then as she went on um, Eri has kind of added more detail to some of the pages. I'm very sorry the camera's shaking a bit but yeah so this um, moving on now to the Animal Kingdom book by Minnie Rotter the Romantic Country book is the same size as a Joanna Basford book or a Minnie Morata book, any of the square books that you may have. So as you can see, the pocket edition books are a lot smaller than, you know, kind of normal. Not They're almost square, they're not quite. But um, yeah, it's very, very small in comparison. And I wanted to get this because I originally got the first copy. Well, Animal Kingdom is one of the first books that I got. And because of that obviously my colouring wasn't great back then I wasn't happy with any of it and at some point I said I did want to get a second copy but then I saw that Millie was coming out with the pocket colouring books and I thought well this could be a great alternative because her books are so detailed it would be good to have a different um, you know format of her colouring I wanted to see how it compared to the Joanna Basford book which has literally just come out um, I don't have it but it's the mini secret garden and they do the same thing they zoom in on some really detailed pictures and then keep some the same which is really really good to see now the only thing i've noticed which is a disadvantage to this is that it's only glue bound so this is where the autofocus might be a bit annoying um i'm really sorry if it doesn't focus properly yeah that's not gonna do it is it um i don't know why it's being like that i'm so sorry but um, this is glue bound and yeah, it's not as good as stitch bound. Um, you know what we've all come to kind of expect from quite a few books. So because of that, the um, pages kind of got a bit ruined on the page that I was working on and I will show you that. But I'm just going to show you a few examples of where pictures have been zoomed in and changed a bit. So something like this the octopus has stayed exactly the same but there are some that have been zoomed in and some formats that have changed so this one for example the moth there were four moths on a single page and they've just kind of taken one of them and put them on a single page and then they also appear here as well 
so let me find one that's zoomed in for you so apart from kind of zooming in and the different format of stuff it's the same book so let me find one that i know i saw this one so this one was kind of a circular shape on the page and this has been zoomed in so it's kind of the inner part of the circle which i think is really good because it would have been very detailed and then this is one that's kind of stayed the same except it's just obviously been shrunken down a bit to fit in a small book so i want to show you the page that i've been working on which is this one so i'm going to explain my technique and um you know what I use and stuff in a minute but I do just want to say about the binding because it's glue bound um when I fold this page over like so you can kind of see that it doesn't go over completely it misses out a little bit of the the paper which is really really annoying it's quite hard to see but yeah it's it is kind of annoying and it actually ripped kind of the the side of the the paper off again you might not be able to see um because it was glue bound and if i stand it up normally you can see that it's broken the spine the spine is heavily broken already just with the one page and kind of flipping through it so you might have to be a bit careful but it's a gorgeous book apart from that so for this page i used rembrandt pastels for the background and then i went in with a dermot eraser to rub out one of the bees so that obviously it didn't have the yellow base on it um it was kind of a yellow creamy color which i really really liked and then i followed a tutorial um that steph did and that's uh, her channel is red tifa she's not filming videos and uploading them at the moment but um, I love her videos and I always watch them back. So I followed her tutorial. So I'll explain a bit about what I did. But I will also link her video down below. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial, then that's where to go. So she used alcohol markers on hers. I didn't because it's double-sided. Um, so instead I used a Tombow marker for all of the yellow bits. And this is number 090. And these are water-based markers. So on the one side we have the, the brush tip. And on the other, we have the kind of mini felt tip, which is really, really lovely. And the brush tips are great for colouring in areas without streakiness as well. So I've got um, quite a few of these. They are very expensive, so I only buy one or two at a time. But they are absolutely lovely. And I love how long they are as well. And they do last quite a while. I've only had to replace one of them. And that was the first one that I ever got. So I used those as a base instead of the alcohol marker. And then to do kind of the furry effect you can kind of see that um i think the camera has kind of zoomed in weirdly a bit but yeah basically i went over with a white gel pen first so i used this jelly roll number 10 to do some strokes and dots and things and then um what Steph did was she went over with fine liners so there's no pencil involved in these which i think is really great and you know something a bit different that i wanted to test out so for the gray bits you kind of do a stippling effect so you just do little dots and little lines and dash type um things so i used uh, a black a dark gray and a light gray and these are all stayed low. and then for the orangey yellow bit I used the yellow and orange from the pastel set of six and then a normal yellow and a light brown. And one thing to note is that I didn't use the white gel pen on the grey bit, I only used it on the white. So yeah, that's what I did for all of them and it didn't turn out the best. It's nowhere near as good as Steph's. Hers is, hers is absolutely amazing and I believe she did it in one of Ruby Charm Colours books. The other thing I want to mention is that I did do multiple layers of stuff and for that reason some bits did bleed through you might be able to see it didn't fully bleed through but there's heavy heavy shadowing and the color of especially the um the darker colors are coming through now that doesn't really bother me because if i was to do this page i could just color the background do something with it um it wouldn't you know it doesn't bother me so if that's something that will bother you then obviously don't put multiple layers of fine liner down or wait for the fine liner to dry that might work instead um i didn't wait for it to dry i kind of just i did it but um i will show you the colors that i use now for the honeycomb so i did use pencil for the honeycomb and i used three artesa pencils and one paper castile so i used espresso brown a071 i don't know why this is being funny um then we have the burnt ochre a113 
then the light cadmium yellow which is the polychromo and the cream a150 which almost looks white but it's not so i use those um normal method put the darker color first um then burnt ochre then the yellow and then just burnished it with the cream so nothing special with that but i don't imagine i'll get this done before the end of september but i'm hopefully going to work on it a bit more but you can see that going from the base of tombow here to where it gets you to i've really really liked the effect and it's something a bit different so that's what i've done so far in this i really wanted to start something in here for you just to show my thoughts on the paper how it works and pencil work great and as i said just gotta be a bit careful with things bleeding through so those fine liners are water-based but as i said i did multiple layers so that's why they they bled through okay so um, the next thing that I want to show you is the Jane Davenport product and this is the Palette Pastel Mineral Eyes. These are absolutely amazing. I love them so much. Now I am just going to get something that I forgot to get which is just above me. Um, okay, so for these, I did swatch them out for you so I'm going to show you and I'll show you the actual product in a moment. Where are they? Okay. So these are the palette pastels. Now it may be quite hard to see um, and I can't use the torch on my phone to show you because unfortunately I'm filming with those but you can kind of see in the light they do shimmer quite a lot. They're absolutely gorgeous and I also did them on black for you. Now they're kind of only coming up as metallic which is really annoying but um, I'm going to try and move my light down a bit which may change the lighting but I really want you to be able to see because they are glittery they're absolutely gorgeous and the the camera really isn't doing it justice they're absolutely amazing so these are basically I think the idea of Jane Davenport's line of um products is that they look like makeup products but they are actually art products so these are made to look like eyeshadows i think and they're all marbled but they are actually pastels and as i said they're all glittery and shimmery so um it says here 18 marbleized cake pastels you don't have to dig deep to discover the beauty of these mineral inspired palette pastels 18 marbleized hues easily and effortless easily and effortlessly blend so that's all it says about them but um i'm going to show you them now and you'll see what i mean about them looking like um eyeshadow so it does come with a swatch card and i did swatch them out but it didn't work very well this is very shiny card so there's not much tooth for the pastel to latch onto so it didn't work and actually the shimmer's kind of gone out of all of them but don't worry i found a way to use them in colouring books in colouring books you'll have no problem because there's always going to be some sort of tooth even if a picture is sorry even if a paper is very very smooth they'll still um, go on the paper so i would say to um the the company i would i would say with these it's great to have a swatch card because you've got all of the um, names and things on it, but um, just make it so that there's some tooth, use a different type of card or something so that you, you know, this does show just as of what, you know, they actually look like. So here is the um, palette. So I believe there's about four of these. I've only got this one because it was really, really different to anything that I've got. But there are some that aren't shimmery. So there's only this one that's shimmery, I believe. And the other ones just have traditional colours. And I've got pastels already, so I don't feel like I needed them. But this is opens up just like an eyeshadow palette. And you can see that um, I have used them. that has shimmer everywhere. And I'm sorry for the glare. But they are so shimmery. And I'm not sure if the camera's really picking it up. It's such a shame because they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, but to use these, I started off with cotton buds and they really didn't work very well. And I was really disappointed because I was like, oh my God, you know, then the shimmer isn't really going on as I expected it would. But um, on Jane Davenport's like, brand on Amazon, they sell the cosmetic applicators. 
and I only had a few that were already quite dirty so I tried washing them and used them and they were absolutely amazing and they're what I used to do the swatch so I uh, we went into town yesterday and I did get some now the only negative I have about these is that they're not very environmentally friendly they obviously are in plastic and I did end up getting quite a few because ordinarily they would be double-ended but these ones aren't so I figured well I can have one for each colour so these are really good because when you open them they come in their own little pouch like this and these are just from Superdrug and then you can just take them out and use them and these are so good because they've kind of got a foamy texture to them the glitter latches on really really well and it's just so smooth and effortless so I really really like how you know these work so um Jane does sell them on Amazon they're quite expensive I think they're about seven pounds uh, but I think they're double ended and they come in a big pot and you do get quite a few so if you do want her brand of things they do sell them but um uh, yeah I just went to get these ones because I figured they'd kind of work the same so the marble effect doesn't really affect the colour that's produced because obviously some of them have quite a weird colour to them so for example this one kind of has a goldy effect but with green on it so I'm just going to use this as an example so I've kind of got one of these um applicators sorry I just shipped the camera and all you do is really really lightly go over it and you can see there's not that much on there really and then you just really really lightly go over you don't need that much now obviously if you want a more intense color by all means go back in press down a bit harder and just do one singular area but the lovely thing about these is that you can get really really pale colors as well and what you could almost do is do a normal pastel background and you'll see an example of what i did in a minute you can do a normal pastel background and then go over with these and it will give a shimmery effect to any color that you've got so for example this color up here is almost a white so it's lovely because i went over a yellow with that and it didn't affect the color of the pastel at all so they're just absolutely lovely so i'm going to try and see if the camera will such a shame i don't think the camera is really picking up i wonder if i turn the light mm, yeah that's not really showing up sorry the light's going to come back in now i'm going to try a darker color for you and see if it shows up any better because it's really hard showing stuff like this on camera because it really does not give the full effect of what you know of what it looks like so this black one has hints of kind of a pinkish color in it which is lovely oops okay is that going to be any better i still don't think you're going to be able to see it it's such a shame if i can get a better clip i'll insert it at some point um, at the end of the video but i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to i might have to try and get the light of my phone and then do that but i'm not really sure how that's going to work um but trust me when I say they are really shimmery in kind of a metallic and glittery way and they're absolutely amazing. So these are so, so great and the colour range is lovely as well because you kind of have the, sorry, I just shook the camera again. As you can tell, I'm, I'm new to this. So yeah, we've got the kind of lighter colours on this side and then you kind of get the other ones as well. The only thing I would say is obviously this one turns out to be kind of a green colour as I've done here of course you can't see that much but there isn't really um a yellow that you know there isn't a yellowy one kind of here but there's loads of lovely blue ones and some greens as well this one's a really nice light green so there's a lovely variety and this one again is quite like a white so there's a really good variety and i absolutely love the whole packaging um, of it so as I said stay tuned to the end of the video if I can get a better clip of the shimmer I will put it in for you but um, it's so annoying that you know you can't visually see it um, you know like face to face 
so the last thing that i want to show you is peter pan now i did mention this quite a bit because i got this a long time before i got um what was i talking about before i um before i got forest girl and it didn't arrive but this book is absolutely gorgeous and i've started a page in it using the jane davenport um palette pastels so again i'm not going to do a full flip through this because there's so so many but i did have a few pages marked out which i will show you and you get a massive poster at the back which i'm sure lots of you have seen uh, but i started doing just one of these simple start pages so this was one of the only books now one of the only books by fabiana Ashnazio that has um the english edition and the good thing about that is obviously the story of the book which is condensed down um is all in english so you get the first few pages here with the writing and then you go into full illustrations so it's not like ivy and the ink butterfly where there's story throughout it is just pictures and then the story at the beginning which some of you may prefer so yeah as i said with this picture at the beginning i used the jane davenport shimmer and it's such a shame i i'm just gonna stand up a minute and see if i can see through the camera or not because it's such a shame that you can't that you can't pick it up um what i am yeah as i said what i'm going to try and do is put um like the the torch on my phone up against it and see if you can um see it in the clip afterwards but um i'll try and do that for you but yeah for this page as you can see i've kind of got a yellow effect and um let me just move the light a bit i've got a yellow effect even though there wasn't a yellow pastel so i put down normal yellow chalk pastel and then i went over with sorry one of the light um jane davenport palette pastels just so that i could test out what would happen and it worked amazingly now the thing that i need to tell you is that if you don't use a fixative then it probably will spread. I had quite a few issues and I didn't realise at that time I would need a fixative. So I did go and get one. And this one that I got, uh, the Winsor Newton Professional Fixative, was only £4.50 or something at WH Smith. I thought it was originally about £7.25, but it was on a discount for some reason, which I didn't realise. And I was going to get it anyway. But um, it was amazing to find that, you know, there was almost £3 off. So... There is 150 millilitres. Yeah, so this is the smaller size. And if you're using fixative, at least how I'm using it, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. But um, you put down what you're going to do first, so say the pastel or the um, Jane Davenport in this case. And then you go outside and spray it about 30 centimetres above so that you don't get little specks of the fixative. And then you can then colour the rest. So I did the fixative before, I then did the pencil over the top, which for me you know worked really well so yeah i did the background first ah you can kind of see it there still not coming out very well oops sorry but yeah i then used pencils so i used whole binds and then two of the fine liners again the sailor ones and if we look on the other side you see that the fine liners didn't lead through at all so they're really really great so yeah as i said i'll try and get a better clip of these to show you but i had a few pictures chosen um and peter pan has a special place in my heart because we did it for my year six production and i was lucky enough to be wendy so you know it's very you know it's a very special show and story for me so this is one of the pictures that i had print, uh, chosen to maybe do um, I really, really like that one. And yeah, it's kind of a mandala as well with the clock. Um, this one, I really like this one of Tinkerbell. That one's really, really cute. And again, not too detailed. We then have the Mermaids one, which I really like. Um, and this shell one, the sea life type picture. And there are some other gorgeous pictures. I mean, they're all lovely. And at some point, I would love to have the whole book finished. But that's not going to happen. Um, I know it's not. But 
but um, there's this one that I absolutely love as well. And I've seen many people colour out of her books. So I would like to get some more of her books, definitely. But I think particularly when I would like to focus on trying to do as many pictures from one book, obviously um, I would then be going between others. So at some point I will get a few more of them if they're still in stock. It's, um, it's really annoying at the moment because lots of them are going out of print, I think. So they're not as available as um, some. So this one was one that was more available than others. And I know Wizard of Oz, I think, is pretty good. Um, you know, pretty well in stock. But there are great pictures in here because some of them have Zentangle type designs. Some have less detail, some have more detail. So, yeah, there's a great mix. So this book is absolutely gorgeous. And I'll just give you pretty much a quick flip. As I said, they're very, very well-known books, so um, there are flip-throughs everywhere on YouTube. So that is Peter Pan by Fabriano Atanasio. So, yeah, that's everything. I really, really hope you enjoyed watching this video. And as I said, I'd love your input. I'd love to hear down below what your um, ideas are for how to use these in videos. So if you want to see a colour and chat with something or um, using something on a page, let me know. I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say and especially to those of you that kindly donated it would be really interesting to hear because obviously you know um, you put money towards these so everything will be down below as usual the Kofi link is always down below and I appreciate all of your donations so so much thank you um, you know this video wouldn't be possible without all of you so yeah as I said I really hope you enjoyed watching if I can get a better clip I'll insert it but if not I will see you in my next video Bye everyone. Hi everyone, so I've just zoomed in a bit so that you can hopefully see the shimmer. That is so much better. Can you see that? So it's a lot more glittery when it's in the light and you can, you can definitely see it now. So this is what, you know, the full potential of the Jane Davenport pastels are and so annoying that you can't see in, you know, kind of the normal light. Obviously, I can see it because I, um, you know, um, looking at it directly, but in a video, it's a lot harder. One of the best um, ways to see it, sorry, I just hit the camera, is the um, on the black star because the shimmer is kind of on the darker parts it's easier to see I'm just going to get the I'm going to zoom out for you a little bit um, I am just going to get the swatches for you just to show you those again but with the um, the light from my torch on the phone so you can see them a lot better yeah see they're a lot more shimmery now Oops, it's harder to see on the white, but you can kind of make them out. But yeah, I hope that's helped a bit and, um, you know, to kind of explain how they work and stuff. But as I said, thank you so much for watching. Um, this was just kind of a short add-on clip. Um, and yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye, everyone.